Hello everyone and welcome to the session for today. I will be your moderator. I'm Fatima Dirani from Lebanon. I have done my master's in production enhancement from St. Petersburg Mining University, Russia. We have a very interesting session. It's about coil tubing, uh, which will be presented by engineer Ahmed Ziftawi. So before proceeding to, to the session, if you have any questions during the presentation, Use the Q&A section. We will have time for the questions at the end. So this is our very esteemed, high esteemed and skillful engineer, Ahmed, Dr. Uh, engineer Ahmed uh, Ziftawi. Engineer Ahmed Ziftawi has 34 years of industry experience in coil tubing, nitrogen, nitrogen services, completion, wireline testing, uh, well testing, uh, well intervention, and downhaul covering the Middle East. He did his Bachelor in Mechanical Engineering from Cairo University in 1983. Engineer Ahmed has worked in 17 uh, countries in his field of expertise as, as a supervisor, consultant, instructor, and manager. Let's warmly welcome our honorable speaker, Engineer Ahmed Ziftawi. Please continue. This session is over to you. Thank you, Fatma. Have a good day. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today is our second session on, and last one on coal tubing. Uh, we had one yesterday, and uh, today we'll continue. And we don't have much topics to talk about today. Uh, as you see in front of you, we'll talk about only stuffing box, BOB, and shear seal BOB. And uh, although there is no much topic to talk about it, but what you see in front of you is a very heavy topic. Yeah. We, can, uh, we can talk about it for, for a whole day. But in this course, we will go, yeah, we just need to know, as we discussed in every session, general knowledge. So uh, let us start with the stuffing box, which is our primary barrier. Remember, in the, in, the, in, the, in the very beginning, when we talk about the barriers, we say that uh, as per the API standards, the minimum number of barriers we have to use, regardless the kind of operation we are doing, either we are drilling, uh, work over, uh, coal tubing, uh, a slick line, wire line, E-line, uh, snubbing, the minimum number of tested and available barriers too. And uh, when we deal with the intervention, and the word intervention means when we work on life cells with coal tubing or wireline or snubbing, we normally use three barriers. Why, Ahmed? The API said the minimum two. Yes. If you are working on a life well with two barriers as per the API, which is the minimum, and during the job, one barrier failed, it's a big disaster because this left you with only one barrier. And now you cannot work because as per the API, you need at least two. So when we work with three barriers, so during the job, if one barrier failed, we're still fulfilling the API requirement, minimum requirement, which is two barriers working. So our primary barrier when we deal with cold tubing is the stuffing box. What is the stuffing box? Again, I would remind you with the very beginning, in the first session when we talk about the barriers, we said we have primary barrier, secondary barrier, and tertiary barrier. And normally, you will always see that the primary barrier and the secondary barrier are ceiling barriers, while the tertiary barrier is mainly a shearing barrier that cuts. That's why the tertiary barrier, sometimes we call it shearing barrier because it has the shearing capability. But in primary and secondary, most of the cases you will see it, it is sealing barriers. We don't go, we don't want to go to the shearing barrier unless we try our best to seal without shear. 
Stuffing box, this is, this is, as we see yesterday, this is a piece of a call tubing. While running in the hole, we use the stuffing box as a primary barrier. The stuffing box is the ceiling barrier. Here it is, it's proper material. And what we see now is the pipe where we have the stuffing box, we have the ceiling barrier. So while running in the hole now, this pipe is running in the hole with this rubber or ceiling is squeezed on the pipe, preventing oil or pressure generally, whatever caused by gas or whatever, to scale from here, from the clearance between the OD of the pipe the ID of the element, it prevents this gap. And during the job, since there is friction between the wire, between coil tubing in our case and rubber element, there will be a gap because this friction will create a gap here. When we have such a thing, what we do is we increase the pressure on the stuffing box allowing this element to be squeezed on the pipe again, preventing this gap created due to friction. What we see here is the injector. This is the injector, which injects a pipe by force into the well, or we use it during pulling out of the hole. And this is the gooseneck, as we discussed yesterday, where we mentioned that this radius depends on the OD of the pipe. And when we increase the pipe diameter, we have to increase the radius of the gooseneck. Why? To reduce the bending stress, which is the main killer on the pipeline. And what you see here below the injector, this, this is the stuffing box. This is our primary barrier. And in this picture, what you see is a rig up, where we have the crane lifting the injector, move it from the coal tubing trailer all the way to the top of the Christmas tree to fix it on the Christmas tree to start the job. In this picture, if I am the company man, if I am the man in charge from the operating company, and I see the service company doing the rigor in this way, what I will do, I will ask the supervisor, please rig down, put the injector back. Thank you very much indeed, go home. I will not allow him to continue the job. He didn't even start it yet, yes, but I have to prevent it because this supervisor, he knows nothing about the oil field. What's wrong in this picture? Here we have the crane lifting the injector. And what we have here is the hydraulic hoses connected to the control cabin, to the power pack, to the control cabin, and which activates the injector and control the movement. So these are the components of the picture in front of you. What's wrong in the picture? I tell you, I let just a few seconds for you guys to think. You see, this is the hydraulic hoses, which is connected to these connections. The way he is moving the injector now, getting the weight of the hydraulic hoses, transmitted only to the connections. This destroy the connections. And this might result in a fail during the job. What he has to do actually is we put sling or a wire loop here and fix it to the body. So the weight of the hoses is not to the connections, but to the body itself. This is what's wrong in this picture. Again, this is our stuffing box. This is our primary barrier. This is how it looks like. What you can read here is the Parker 
SD means side door because this is one of the uh, one of the design where in the side door stuffing box all what we do if we need to change the element this is again this is a pipe and we agree that this is the stuffing box this is the rubber element the stripper this is the old type where this is one and quarter inch so we have the id here matches with one and quarter inch the new type of the stripper is this which is much better why because if you see the faces here are not smooth it has a profile so the other part it will grab on each other and there is no slippage between the two pieces in this design in the side door if we need to change this element what we have to do is to open the door you see this is this is the handle of the door so we just open it take the bad element with the new one and close the door again very simple design so that's why side door parker side door stripper parker because it's stacking uh, 406 this is the side this one is for uh, 116 inch the m It, it it can resist it can handle up to this size the core tubing the core tubing stuffing box is uh, dynamic seal around the core tubing compressed to seal by well pressure and hydraulic pressure to seal we have to apply increase the pressure to seal if it leaks and it is polymers self lubricating polymers so you don't have to lubricate your pipe while running in the hole or pulling out of the hole and we can change it even if the well is life and your core tubing is inside the well how we do that simply if your primary barrier is leaking we said that in the session when we talk about the barrier what you do first thing is to do is stop the operation because we agreed before that the only barrier that can work while in and out is the primary barriers all other barriers you can think of they work in a static condition you have to stop the operation to apply the secondary barrier what is the second barrier in our case it is the called the, the bub where we apply the bub to seal around the pipe then bleed off the pressure but before we do that when you close the bub you close it hydraulically then you have to close it manually we will talk about that later then you bleed off the pressure above and then you close again and do what we call it flow test if you still remember it from our first session you have to be sure that the bob you close to seal around the pipe is holding the pressure so you have to make inflow test where you wait for 10 minutes see if there is any build up above this ram when you close it or not because if there is a pressure above that means the bob is leaking there is pressure coming from below above once your bob is inflow tested and it holds the pressure now you can uh, change the rubber element on the stripper rubber this is how the two elements of the stripper this is one piece we have another piece it when we put them together they lock together no spillage no slippage sorry and it seals and this is this is the id the id always represent the size of the pipe so this is actually designed to hold in one and quarter you cannot use it for one and a half or two inch you have to change the rubber elements we have three main designs or types of strippers or stuffing box we have 
Number one, as you see it here, conventional stripper, which is this one, which is a very old type. And then we have number three, side door stripper, which is this one. You see, you see that you saw the picture a while ago. And the last one, number four, we call it radial stripper, which is this one. It, it's, it, it looks like a BUB type. Number two, where I ignore it, <laughs> we call it tandem stripper, which is this one. A tandem stripper is actually a side door stripper. The only difference between them is that the side door, which is this one, it has no top connection, it has no thread or flange, because this is fixed to the injector. But when we deal with high pressure category, the API said you have to have two strippers. So we have to add additional stripper to our rigger. To have additional stripper to our rigger, how we connect it? Then we have to have a type of connection, whatever thread, like this one, or flat. So we can add it to the original one, which is there. Uh, I said high pressure. What do I mean by high pressure? Yani 5,000 PSI. Is it high pressure or low? If you said high, then I will tell you, okay, what about 3,000? Is it high or low? What about 1,560? Is it high or low? What about 500? Is it high or low? Yani, where is the red line between what we call high pressure and what we call low pressure? Can you draw this line for me, please? Can any one of you tell me where is this line? Actually, this line does not exist. There is no line that separates between what we call high pressure and low pressure. But there is a pressure category. If you go to the API, and in particular API 16ST, the API that deals with pressure control equipment, you will not see this line between high pressure and low pressure, but you will see categories. Category zero, where uh, our wellhead pressure is zero. Then we we'll go for category one, which is from one PSI to 1500 PSI. Then we we'll go to category two, which is from 1501 to 3500. Then we go to category three from 1,500 to 3,500. Then we go to category four, which is from uh, 3,501 to 7,500 and so on. And it is categories and in each category, it tells you how to do the rigging and, uh, and the, what is the minimum number of barriers and what is the minimum pressure rating of the equipment you are using. It, it's really very, very nice to know that. So there is no uh, particular line between what we call high pressure and low pressure. That's why I don't like this word. Because if I tell you high pressure, then I'm in a gray area. I'm not specific. But I have to tell you which figure I'm using. Then you will know what pressure range I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. And uh, Again, if you remember from the first session, when we talk about uh, a pressure test of a barrier, and I will just repeat it again. Let us assume that we have a blowout preventer, BOB, pressure, which is part of the pressure control equipment, which is rated to 5,000 PSI. And now we need to recertify it because on a regular basis, we have to test it to be sure that it is in good working condition. I'm not talking about the regular test we make every time we use it. I'm talking about the test we use to recertify this BOB. So when we recertify the BOB, which is rated for 5,000, we bring a third party. So this third party will witness the pressure test I am making. When I make this pressure test, 
I will not make it to 5,000. That's per the APR. I will make it to a minimum of 1.5 working pressure. So if its working pressure is 5,000 degree, then the test will be made to 7,500. But when I issue the certificate, it is 5,000. The relation between the maximum working pressure and the the test pressure for the purpose of certification is at least, as per DPR, 1.5. When I take this BOB to go to the field, the maximum pressure I will, uh, I will do is 5,000. I cannot exceed it. The one I make it to 7,500, I do it once. Every time I need to recertify this, this BOB. So back to our primary barrier, which is a stuffing box. We said we have three categories. Convention, which is this one. Side door, radial. This one is tandem, where we use it in case of high pressure category. That as per the API, it is required to have two strapers and two BUDs. And by the way, the tooth stripper you are using, let us go for a rig up, high pressure category, where you have, as per DPI, have two strippers and two beauties. Let us count how many barriers we have. Can we say, when we talk about strippers, we have two barriers, stripper one, stripper two, these are two barriers? No, they are one barrier. Why? because they are doing the same function. Since they are doing the same function, if we put five strippers, it is classified as one barrier. But when you go to the Christmas tree, where we have three valves, swap, upper, and lower valve, each one of these three valves, if you close it, it will prevent the flow of hydrocarbon. But can I consider the Christmas tree as three barriers? Of course not. It is one barrier. Because all these valves are contained in one body. One body is one barrier. So if I have a blowout preventer, it has 20 rams, each ram doing uh, a different function than the other. This BUB is one barrier. Because it is one body. So remember, one body, one barrier. One function, one barrier. So let us talk quickly about these three types of strippers. And let's start with the very old one, which is the conventional stripper, this one. How it looks like. Before we go here, yeah, I need you to, to know that. we we'll go to the other. These are four types let us say not three, four types of strippers. These four types has nothing to do with pressure rating. So you cannot ask me, Ahmed, uh, can you recognize, recognize the pressure rating of this stripper from their type? I say, no, of course. Because the conventional could be rated for 3,000 or 10,000. The same thing applied to the radio, same thing applied to the Tandem, same thing applied to the side door. So the only way to recognize the pressure rating of this stripper is the manufacturer, data sheet. So one time I have this question, which you have it, by the way, in your exercise. Can we recognize, how we recognize the pressure rating of the stripper, and then I gave you choices. So one day, one of the candidates select uh, an answer which says that uh, by uh, applying pressure test to the stripper. I said, great. Let us assume that this is your stripper. And I need you to tell me what's the maximum working pressure of this, and you select an answer saying, by doing pressure tests to this to recognize the working pressure. He said, fine, let us start pressure test this stripper. Up to what pressure you will test it? 
them silent for a minute. And then I said, okay, I will test it for 3,000 PSI. I told him, you will die. He said, how, what? I said, you will die. He said, how come? I said, because the maximum working pressure of this one is 1,000 PSI. So now you are tested for 3,000, it will explode. And you are a dead body. You cannot determine the working pressure of the stripper by testing it. Test it to what pressure? The only way to recognize the working pressure of a stripper or a stuffing box, regardless of these types you see in front of you, is by the manufacturing working pressure data sheet. The manufacturer will supply the stripper to you. He tells you exactly what is the pressure rating of this. Good point to remember, huh? We have different size of the strippers, depending on the uh, pipes we are using. We have different pressure rating. It is, of course, dressed for the specific size. That's why when you change the size of the pipe from one and quarter to two inch or one and a half or 1.75, you have to change the stripper components to match the new size we are using. We have different pressure rating, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. We have, some of them are H2S resistance as per the NACE. Connection is, keep it in mind that it, it has to be flanged now. What you see here in this picture is this. Do you believe how this becomes the picture you see it in front of you now. Because you select the wrong material for the specific job. We have different types of material we are using for stripper. I don't know, I don't want you to, to uh, memorize it here. But this is an example that if you are running in the hole with the will that I have h to s then you cannot use the urethane. You have to use the vitum, which is excellent for h to s So that's why the material you are using has to match the job you are doing. This is the inside of the stuffing box, where we have this is the rubber element that seals but also we have some other components and all these components has to be changed if you are changing the size you are using of culture. This is our primary barrier. Conventional type, which is the very old type. And this is how it works. In this type, the pressure when we need to squeeze this rubber element to the pipe to prevent the leak, the pressure is applying from this port, which is below here. We apply the hydraulic pressure, pushing the piston upwards. This is how, how it goes. This is where we apply the pressure. And then it moves everything upward, as you see. And these are the components inside. And this black color, this is the rubber element that seeds. And since, as you see, it is flat, so to prevent this slippage, that's why we put this into another compartment, which is this one, the green one, which is, we call it inner geyser. In, uh, when we apply pressure, this moved everything upward, as you see. But we cannot move upward. Why? Because on the top, we have this upper brass that locks 
So you are not allowed to move anything up. The only movement that can happen when you apply this hydraulic pressure to activate the piston upward is the gap between this rubber element and the pipe. So you are squeezing more on the pipe preventing a leak. So in this type, a pressure is applied from below, pushing everything upward to squeeze the rubber element on the pipe while in hole or out of the hole. And this is actually, again, uh, there is an advantage of this type. To retract, of course, you have to apply pressure from this part, pushing everything down now so you can change the stripper. This type, it is the only type of all kinds of stripper rubber that a well pressure, if it increases during the job, a well pressure has an access to the system. So a well pressure will push the piston upwards, squeezing this rubber element to the pipe. So when a well pressure increases, this assists this rubber to seal more on the pipe. And this advantage is applicable only to the conventional stripper. None of the stripper, other type of stripper rubber, a well pressure has nothing to do with it. Remember, the only thing is the convention that a well pressure helps it to squeeze more on the pipe. And this is also the only type of stripper that when you need to change the element, you change it from the top. All other type of stripper, when you need to change the element, you change it from the side. To change this from the top, you have to release the pressure. This pins, you take it out. This upper brass, brown color, you see it on the top here. You unscrew it because these are two pieces, so it will split. Pushing, applying pressure, this will push the system up. The system will go up now because there is no upper brass pushing. You can change from the top and put the new piece. The disadvantage of this type is the reduced time. It was actually a nightmare if you need to change the element during the job. It was a nightmare. But nowadays, we are using a side door, which you saw the picture of it. Because it is simple. This is the side door. This black and blue, these are the stripper. And if we need to change it, we open the door, the side door, we agree, we take the element, put the new one, close the door, apply pressure down, then in five, ten minutes, you change the element, even during the job. This is the side door. Well, pressure does not help it. Again, well, pressure does not help, and well, pressure helps only in case of conventional strip. Five to ten minutes to do this. Radial stripper, which is the last one. It's like a BOB ram. Where you have two rams to activate it, you have to take the whole activator out so you can change this rubber element. But this takes time, it takes about 45 minutes to be able to have to take the whole ram out. And normally we use it for uh, uh, big sizes, like two, seven, eight, three and a half inch. Do we have three and a half inch? Yes, we'll discuss this. We actually, we actually have, have up, to, up to six and a half inch. And we have called tubing uh, different size. This is the control cabin, by the way, where you can control everything from, from inside. This is, here is, uh, one of the types of control cabin where you sit here, you have, you can monitor from these gauges, you can monitor everything, and from these knobs, and, uh, you can increase and decrease the pressure, and you can move uh, up or downwards. Uh, and here, your controls of the pressure, pressure control equipment. And this is your, your, uh, your reel where you have stored your pipes. This is the pipe, and this is your counter where you can count how many feet you run in the hole.
when I talk about the sizes, the call tubing sizes, we have actually, we have many sizes. And starting from three quarter inch to one inch, one and quarter, one and a half, one three quarters, two inch, two three eighths, two seven eighths. Uh, we have uh, three and a half, we have uh, four and a half, we have six and a half. Six and a half, Ahmed, and you spool it on the drum. Oh, yeah, yes, we do that. And the drum is, is, is huge, yeah, I mean, it's a building. <laughs> uh, a normal size we use in, in the Middle East is between let us say now two inch up to two seven eighths and even two seven eighths are, are very rare. Uh, it does exist in one or two countries like Qatar and Saudi Arabia and we do it, uh, they do it one job a year or two jobs a year, but the, 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 the common that it's, it's every, every day activities, it's uh, two inch we say. Our secondary barrier is the BOB. BOB stands for Blue Out Preventer. It is the secondary well control barrier if the primary barrier failed. And it is isolating the well power pressure during emergency, in case of emergency. We will close it, we secure our well. It provides a means of holding the call TV because it has slips, we see it now, that hold the weight of the pipe uh, just as a, as a backup if the injector gripper clock is not capable of holding the pressure due to any problem you have in your injector circuit. We have many types of it and different sizes, exactly like, like uh, the stuffing box we have. 316, 416, 5, 1, 8. Uh, for a specific size of the call tubing ID. So if you are using one and a half and you need to change to two an inch, you have to change the elements of the BUB to match the new size you are using. Rating for 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. The hydraulic circuit, it varies between 1,500 and 300, 3,000 based on the designer. Uh, and you see this point? Call team must be stationary when using any of the BOB function. We agreed that apart from the primary barrier, any barrier you are using, to use it, you have to stop the operation. It's working static. The only one to work up and down is the primary barrier. This picture, what you see here, is a blowout preventer. This blowout preventer, this is quad. Quad means four, because it has four actuators. You see it here. And, and each actuator has a handle at the end. From top to bottom, the very top one, we call it blind, it has blind. Call it blind. No call tubing in the BOB body because in blind, to see the blind, this is the RAM itself. And this is the blind RAM, this is the actual hub. This is the blind RAM insert. Here it is. This is the blind RAM insert. So to activate this, call tubing should not be in place. And when you apply pressure, you close it. And you have one on the other side. And I use just the insert because this is too heavy for me to handle for a while. <laughs> so this is, these are the blind insert. So when you, the ramps, you close it, it goes to seal to it itself, preventing a well pressure from escaping. If there is cold tubing in place, like this one, you cannot, this insert, what it will do, it will damage the pipe, but you, it will not seal. It cannot seal on the pipe because it is straight here. So we use this if there is no coil in place. And then below that, 
The second one here is the shira. This is the shear blade inserts. So when you close it, you see it has, it's like a knife. When you close it, it cuts the pipe. It cuts the pipe. And as per, as per the API is tender, this has to be used once, one time only. So if you use it to cut a pipe, what you do is, you kiss it and say goodbye. You cannot use it again. As per the API. But can actually can you use it? I tell you yes. You take it to the yard, fix it to the BOB, and then put a pipe and cut. Put another pipe and cut. It will. It will cut most probably 30 times, three zero before it failed. But look at the safety factor we are taking in the oil field industry. We use it only one time, although it can cut up to 30 times before it fades. But this is how safety in oil field. This is how it should be. This is one time use. That's why when you go to the field, you cannot function test it. Because if you, at the field, if you need to function test it to be sure it cuts, once you use it, then you have to replace it. Put a new one, you have to make function tested. Do and you need uh, one ton of these? <laughs> one time use only, please. Then, below that, here we have number three from top to bottom is the slip ramp, which you close and hold the cold tubing weight. What you see here is a slip ramp. Look here. These are the teeth, the teeth of the slips. That this is designed to deal with one and quarter inch size pipes. So this is if this is one and quarter inch, this is one piece, and then when you close, It holds the weight of the call to you. If you can look closely to these teeth, I don't know if you can see it now or not, you will see that these teeth is not facing upward or downward. This is completely different than the slips you see on the rig floor. The slips you see on the rig floor, the teeth is facing upward to withstand the weight of the pipe inside the hole. But this thesis is not facing upward. It's neutral. Why? Because now, if you apply the slip ram, now we are closing, this slips will hold the weight of the pipe down also it will prevent, it will pressure from pushing this pipe above, upward, outside the wall. So it works both ways. So we are much better than the drilling. <laughs> I'm not in the drilling side, by the way, that's why I always go for the uh, production side. In production drilling, they are, uh, yeah, if in production is working, is going to the right side, and drilling is going to the left hand side. We are opposite to each other. <laughs> the last one is actually uh, the pipe ramp, which you close and seal around the coal tubing with the coal tubing in place. Again, this is the this is the ram. And this is the pipe ram insert. And you see this profile. This profile is to seal around one and quarter. Goes in. If I need to seal, if the pipe is in place, what I'll do, I'll close. Again, it's too heavy for me to handle. So I'll use just the insert. So I have two inserts. When I close it, this is will seal on one and quarter. This is one and quarter. 
So when I do that, like that, now it's seal around the pipe, but it doesn't hold the weight of the pipe. This is just to seal. So a blind ramp, which seal the entire well bore when you close it because it doesn't seal on a pipe, it seal on itself as we discussed. And pipe ramps, which seal the outside called tubing annulus, seal around if there is a pipe inside. Did you see what I wrote at the end here? only holds pressure in one direction. That's why in the first session, when we discuss how we test the barrier, if you still remember, we said we test it from a direction of flow. We don't test it from below or from above or from the side. From a direction of flow, because it is designed to withstand the pressure from that direction. It is true that in, in, in our oil field application, when we run in the hole, the pressure comes from below, so we test it from the below, but the correct wording is from a direction of flow. It is not designed to hold, to withstand pressure from above. Although, if you take the BOB and you go to the yard and close this like that, and you put 3,000 from above, it will hold the pressure. But what you are doing is a big mistake because you are creating fatigue to that. It is not designed to hold pressure from that direction. So if you use this two, three, four times, and then in the reality, when you go to the field, you apply this in case of emergency, it will not hold. It will tell you, remember that day when you misused me, and remember that day when you misused me? Now, I will not help you. You destroyed me already. Of course, she cannot talk, but uh, it's just an example. <laughs> I will not go through the, the components here. Yani this is not the part of, of you guys to, uh, to know. But the pipe ram seal around the coil only. This is how the pipe rams looks like, and this is the profile depending on the size of the pipe we are using. This is the sheath which cuts, but does not seal. It cuts only. It does not seal. What makes the seal is rubber, not, not metal. And this is the slip ramp, which holds the weight of the pipe in both directions. It, it prevents the pipe from falling down due to its weight, or uh, it does prevent the well pressure from pushing the pipe upward and take it out of the way. You see here, this is the ram, and this is the ram insert, the slip ram insert itself. How we activate the secondary barrier in case of emergency? And let us assume that now that we are running in the hole, doing a job with call tubing on a life hole. And during the job, our primary barrier failed. No, let's go for a more complicated one. Let us assume that during the job, in the life, we notice that we have a problem on the pipe itself. And the well pressure is flowing now inside the pipe and we have a major break on the pipe above the BOB. It's an emergency now that we have to shut down our operation and shut off the will, secure the will. Because if you have a major break on the pipe, 
on the surface. Normally, we have on the bottom wall assembly of the coil tubing a check valve that prevent the pressure of the well escaping inside the well. But if this uh, check valve is, is fail, fail to do the job, or even if you have a hole above the check valve, so the check valve is nothing now for us because the pressure of the well will, will go from this hole above the check valve. So now the pressure is coming to the surface. How you secure the well now? You have to use the, the BUB with the sequence I'm telling you now. Now this is a quad BUB as you see, which has four actuators. And now this is the pipe inside the well now, inside the BUB. The first step to do is closing the slip ramp. This is the slip insert, remember? First thing is to close the slip ramp. And second is to close the pipe ramp, which is number four. So number one is closing number three, actuator, which is a slip. Then we close what's beneath it, which is the pipe ramp. This is our second slip. And when you close the rams of the actuators, I call it, this is the correct word, the actuator, we close it hydraulically, then manually. But I have to have a couple of words. I have to open practice, see if possible. What do I mean by if possible? It means that if the situations allows you to go to the BUB, which is rigged up on the Christmas tree, and be able, it is safe enough to go there and close the handle by yourself. Why we close the handle, which is a mechanical hydraulic? Because when you close it hydraulically, you have to close it manually. When you close it mechanically or manually, if you have a leak in the hydraulic circuit, you prevent the rams from getting apart from the pipe, otherwise you'll have a blowout. But to do that manually, if the situation permits you, but if you have a blowout on the Christmas tree, you cannot go to the BUB to close. If you go, you are making a, a, one trip, one, direct, one direction only, you will not come back. Actually, you will, but as a dead body. So I don't recommend you going there. If the situation does not allow you to go to the BUB to close it manually, don't go. Hydraulically is enough. So first step, we close the slips hydraulically and manually. Second step we are doing is closing the pipe ram hydraulically and manually. Now the pipe is secured. The annulus is secured. The pipe is secured. We are holding it by the slip. The annulus is secured by closing the pipe. Now we need to cut the pipe which is the shear, which is the third step we cut, and then we have to pull out one feet so the pipe is up away from the blind, and then the fifth step is to close a blind ramp. Now the well is secured. Five steps we need. Close the slips hydraulically and manually. Close the pipe hydraulically and manually cut with the pipe, pull out one feet, close the blind hydraulically and manually. Five steps we did. Now the well is secured. This is the main components of the coil tubing, and this is how we rigged up. We have the BUB, which is actually, normally, it is the first thing we put on top of the Christmas tree. And then we have the injector. This is the gooseneck. This is the secondary barrier, which is the stuffing box. This is our power pack, the source of energy. And this is the reel, which is the store of pipe. And we have the control cabin that 
can monitor and control our movement and our operations. This is the different size of coil tubing. As we said, we have the half inch actually. Then we have the three quarter. We have one inch, we have one and quarter, we have one and a half, one three quarter, two inch, two three eighths, two seven eighths, three and a half. Then we have four and a half and six and a half. But these big sizes of coal tubing, uh, we use it as a pipeline. Especially under the water, we have different wall thickness, wall sizes. Um, no need to go through these details for you guys. Uh, what you see in front of you is what we call combi BOB. Combi stands for combination. Combination, we say combined for easy, uh, but it is combination BOB. Why is combination? Because as you see, it is two actuators, not four. These two actuators, the one on top is blind shear at the same time. And the second one, it is a slip pipe that does the function of the slips and the pipe ram, but it is one actuator. The rest of the components are the same, where you have here in the middle between the two rams, you will see what we call a, a killing, kill port. This kill port, we use it for killing operations in emergency. We are not using this port for taking return, for example, from the well. Because by doing this, you are destroying your pressure control equipment. Use the pressure control equipment for the purpose. The purpose is to control the well, prevent the blowout, not to take return. We have pressure sensors, tell us the pressure at this particular point. We have equalizing valve here. These are equalizing valve. Why we have equalizing valve in, in any BOB? Let's assume that you have emergency and you use your secondary barrier, which is BB, to close the pipe round. This is the pipe insert, this is the, the pipe. You close now, and below here you have 3,000. Then you bleed off the pressure above to zero, so you can change your primary barrier, for example. When the well is safe, you need to run back to the operations. What you have to do is to open this. You cannot open it now. Why? Simply because you have 3,000 below and zero above. There is a big differential pressure across. You cannot operate with this differential, high differential pressure. So what you do is you have to equalize the pressure below and above. So what we do is to go with the tool to the equalizing valve and open this port, allowing the pressure to go from below above. So we are equalizing the pressure. Now we can open. So that's why we have equalizing port. You will see this equalizing port in the blind ramp, and you will see it in the pipe ramp, where you will not see it in the slip or shear because in the slip when you apply the slip or you apply shear to cut it does not seal it does there will be no differential pressure above and below the advantage of the compi compared to the quad is two things number one it is less height when you do the rig up, of course, you need to make your rig up as, much, as, as short as possible. So 
el, el, el combi is shorter in length. So this is one of the advantages, it's less height in the vinegar. And number two is less emergency procedure steps. In the quad, if you remember, we make five steps. Close the slips, hydraulically and manually. Close the pipe, hydraulically and manually. Cut. Then pull out on feet. Then apply a blind. Five steps. But here only two steps. The first step is to apply a slip pipe. And the second step is to apply a blind shift. Two steps only. You should have a question in mind now. This question in mind is, in the Quad Ahmed, when we cut, we couldn't apply blind before we pull out one foot to clear this area. So when we cause the blind, it will see itself. Now in the compi, how you close the slip, how you close the blind and shit at the same time without pulling one foot. I tell you, yes, we can do that because the design is different. The design is different. We will see design now when we talk about our tertiary barrier. Our tertiary barrier called tubing mainly is the shear seal beauty from its name, a shear and seal. This is our shear seal, which we call it safety head. And this is normally, if we are using shear seal, this is the first thing we put on top of the Christmas tree. Flange type, of course. Why flange type? Why not thread? The thread, regardless of the type of the thread, it does not resist actually torque. Because when you rig up, if everything is 90 degrees, you have no problem with the thread. But actually, during the job, this movement always happens. The thread which is here will not resist this kind of movement. And then you are engineers, right? So if you remember, even not in faculty of engineering, this is, I think, you have it in the high school, maybe below, below that. If, uh, let us assume that this is our Christmas tree and we rig up our uh, connection, then BUB, then two side section lubricator, and then our injector. During the job, it, this movement, if you are 90 degree, nothing happened. But if we are even one degree of 90, the force applied to this point is the weight here times the distance. If we're talking about injector, we're talking about six ton, time maybe 20 or 30. These are the kind of force applied on the connection here. And the flange is designed to withstand it. Uh, how a shear seal works? Look at this here. Look at this. This is how it works. When you apply shear seal, how it shear and seal at the same time without the need of pulling out one feet, here the design. When you apply pressure, this moves this direction, it cuts the pipe, this is the pipe, it cuts the pipe, and then it continues the movement. When it continues the movement, it bends the lower piece like that, and we have space, a place for it, and then it seals within this area. No need for pulling out one foot. And this is the sheer seal. So, when you apply pressure, it goes, it cuts. And when it continues, it seals. It sheer and seal at the same time without the need of pulling one foot. This is too heavy, by the way, and too expensive also.
when we use our call tubing, our primary barrier is the stuffing box. Our secondary barrier is the BOB. Our tertiary barrier is the shear seal BOB. If you notice here, we have two strippers, but both are, as, as a classification, both are one barrier because they are doing the same function. But you might tell me, Ahmed, but if we apply this principle, we have two BOBs, the quad and the shear. So if we use the same principle you are using for the stripper or stuffing box, these two B, 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 they are doing the same function, so they are one barrier. Why you classify them as two different barriers? This is secondary and this is tertiary. Which is a good question, actually. To think about it and be able to answer it, I tell you that this tertiary barrier, when you put it on the Christmas tree, this one has to have a separate control panel, you can put it away from the Christmas tree up to 200 feet. So in case of emergency, and if the working area is not, too, is not safe to work from, in an emergency, you can operate this tertiary barrier from a distance, from a safe area up to 200 feet away from your location. So this tertiary barrier it works from two places, from the control cabin and from this remote control panel that you can put it 200 feet away from the location so you can shut off the well in case of emergency from a safe area. So they are not the same as you see. That's why this is what tertiary barrier. Tertiary barrier is just to shear and seal at the same time. From here, this tertiary barrier, why we are you using the tertiary barrier? This is to give you additional capability to cut your pipe if the secondary barrier fails, because in the secondary barrier, we have here a shear band that cuts. But this is to give you an option, not an option actually, this is to give you more shearing capability, additional shearing capability, if the secondary barrier failed to cut your pipe. And when we come to the shear ramp, let us assume that we need to change the size of the coil now. And instead of using uh, one and quarter pipe, we are going to use one and a half pipe. What items in the BUB we need to change? Let's go for the pline ramp. Do we have to change the blind ram inserts? This is the blind ram insert. Do we have to change it? Of course not. Because this one does not seal on something, on a pipe. It's sealed on itself. So it has nothing to do with the size of the coil you are using. Let's go for the second one from top, which is the shear. Do we have to change the shear? My answer is most probably not. Why? Because the shear ramp, when you buy it from the manufacturer, the manufacturer will tell you that this shear is capable of cutting a pipe size from uh, one and quarter to two inch, for example, or from one and a half to two three eighths. So most probably this is, it covers a range of sizes. Uh, and most probably when you change uh, a core tubing size on a specific core tubing unit, normally you change uh, one size above or one size below, normally. So normally you will not need 
slip ramp? Definitely you have to change because this is the slip ramp. It is designed for a specific size. So if you change the size, you have to change the slip. The same thing applied to the pipe ramp. This pipe ramp, this profile is to withstand a certain size. If you change the size, then you have to change the pipe ramp. These are the items you have to change if you change the size of the coil tubing for a specific unit you have. It is not necessarily that in every rig up of coal tube you have a tertiary barrier. Where is the guide? You go to the API, the pressure categories. For example, category one, if you are within category one, which is uh, from one PSI to 1500 PSI, if you look at the API, you will not mention shear seal. But you don't need a shear seal uh, in your uh, rig up. Why? If you go to another standard like NORSOC, the NORSOC standard, which is the Norwegian standards, a shear seal VOB is a must in every rig up you make with cold tubing, even if the pressure rating is zero. If we are working within category one, which is from one PSI to 1500 PSI, as per DPI, we don't need the shear seal. In this case, where is our tertiary barrier? Our primary barrier, we agreed it is the stuffing box. Our secondary barrier is the BUB. Where is our tertiary barrier? Don't tell me shear seal. You don't have shear seal in your rig up. So some of you guys will go and tell me, okay, we use the shear ram in the BOB to cut the pipe. Wrong answer. Why? Because we just agree that A BOB, you call it secondary barrier. How can you call it tertiary barrier now? How could your name is Michael and Monica at the same time? You are either Michael or Monica. You cannot both, you cannot be both at the same time. So if we agree that our BOB is a secondary barrier, you cannot call it tertiary barrier. Tertiary barrier has to be a separate body Actually, your tertiary barrier, if you don't have a shear CPUB, will be your Christmas tree. How your Christmas tree will be your tertiary barrier? Do you mean, Ahmed, that if our primary failed and our secondary barrier failed, which is the BUB, can we go to the tertiary barrier, which you are telling me, Ahmed, now it's the Christmas tree, close the swap valve, for example, and this swap valve by closed, it will shear the pipe and secure the well? Of course not. These gate valves are designed to seal. And we agreed before that some master valve, some upper master valve, are designed to cut the slick line. But none of these valves will cut cold tubing. No way. So how do we use the Christmas tree as a tertiary barrier? Here's the answer. Your primary barrier failed, your secondary barrier failed. We need to use now the tertiary barrier, which is the Christmas tree. How to use the Christmas tree as a tertiary barrier? We'll go to the second barrier. We'll tell you, would you please, Mr. BUB, can I use your shear ramp to cut the pipe and let it fall down in the well. When you do that, you go to the swab valve and close to secure the well. This is how we use a Christmas tree as a tertiary barrier. 
Then you catch something. He tells me, Ahmed, we said that the tertiary barrier is normally a shearing barrier. And sometimes we call it shearing barrier as a tertiary barrier. By doing this, you classify the Christmas tree as a second, as a, as a tertiary barrier, but it doesn't shear. Yes, I did that. I said, normally, it is exactly like when I say that <clears throat> normally a fluid is considered the primary barrier if it creates hydrostatic head greater than the formation pressure. But in some application, you will see that a fluid is your secondary barrier. This is a special case, but it does exist. It is exactly like we say that when you recap, the, the BOB is always, you put it on top of the Christmas tree. This is the standard. But we have exception. Of course we have. Do you need an example? Let us try to have an example. Let us assume now that you are running with a slick line and you need to latch on a BBV on the tubing hanger, a back pressure valve sits on the tubing hanger and you need to retrieve it. Where you put your BOB, then you will go for the standard directly on top of the Christmas tree. If this is your answer, what I will give you is a big zero because this is totally wrong answer. Why it's wrong answer? Because let us go with you let us put the Christmas tree, let us put the POB on top of the Christmas tree. You continue your recap, and now we are running with your tools to latch on the BBV, which is on top of the Christmas tree, on the tubing hunger. And when you latch on the tubing, on, on the BBV, you have an emergency situation that you need to close your BOB. Can you close your BOB? Of course not. Why? Because if you close your BOB, it will close on what? It will close on your tool string. It will not seal. Because the BOB is designed to seal on slick line. So in this particular situation, when you put your BOB, you put it at suitable height, not on top of the Christmas tree, as per the standard. You have to measure the length of your bottom hole assembly or your tool string, and then your BOB has to be on top of that height. So if you latch on the BBV and you have an emergency situation that you need to seal around the wire, when you close the BOB, it will not close, it will not close on a tool string. It will close on the wire, the slick. So yes, we have standards but you have to use your brain because we have special application that standard does not work. So it is the Christmas tree is your tertiary barrier, it, although it will not cheer. It will not cheer. But when you apply this scenario I just mentioned, that you use your secondary barrier to cut the pipe, let it fall down, and then use your Christmas tree to close as a tertiary barrier. Before you cut, you have to pull out of the hole at least 10 feet to be sure that when you cut, pipe will fall down. Because if you are at the TD, if you are all the way down, if you cut your pipe, it will not fall because it is on the TD, total depth. Or maybe it is stuck. So you have to be sure that it is free. So when you cut it, it will fall down below the valves that you are going to close. Now I have this two or three questions for you guys. This is a rig above called tubing where we have here the pump, this is the reel, which is the store of the pipe, 
And this is our pipe going all the way to the injector. This is our injector. This is our stripper, which is our primary barrier. This is our POV rigged up on the Christmas tree. This is our secondary barrier. And the Christmas tree is our tertiary barrier. All these valves you see numbered from one all the way up to 10 are closed now. And the question is saying that the above figure shows a rig up for a call tubing. Which valve or valves should be open to pressure test the stripper, knowing that all the valves are closed now. All these valves are closed. I need to open one valve or a group of valves to be able to pressure test the stripper in this rig up, that the stripper is holding the pressure. And I'm giving you four answers. Number A is this group of valves. Number B is this group of valves. Number C is one valve, which is number 10. Number D is this group of valves. I will let you think for a minute before we answer it together. Please think. I need to, to give you a hint that when you apply pressure, you have to pressure test from a direction of flow. Should I discuss now with you guys? I might be hurry because we have been one and twenty minutes, one hour twenty minutes now. Uh, some of you guys might go for the answer A, which says three, four, five, eight, nine. Let's go for this answer. I will open valves number three, four, five, eight, nine. In this condition, this is your pump. You will apply pressure. So the pressure will go here all the way. It goes down. The master valve are closed. So pressure will go up. This is open. So you are pressure testing the stripper from a direction flow, which is from below in our case. And we have another answer, which is number C. One valve you open, which is number 10. So by applying, by opening number 10, you apply pressure through the pump. Pressure goes inside the reel, inside the pipes here, and then goes up, and then goes down. You are testing against the swirl valve. Pressure goes upward to test the stripper from a direction of flow, which is also a good answer, actually. The other two are out, actually. Why we should select C where we apply, we open only one valve. This is an advantage actually to open a valve rather than opening four valves. And I have another good reason to use this. Because when we, you select A as an answer, you are now testing against the upper master valve. Please, 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 three times I said, when you go to the location and you test your equipment, test it against your servant, not against your master. Your servant is the small valve. But these valves, number one and two, we call it master. You know what the word master means? This is the king. This is the Sultan. This is the President. Don't use it. Normally, when I need a service, I go for my servant, not for my wife, because my wife is the, is the master. Believe it or not, this is true. <laughs> so, please don't use, because when you apply pressure to anything, you destroy it. You don't destroy it, you, you, you weaken it. You fatigue it. You shorten its life. Because pressure is a stress. 
you apply. Uh, so by 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 selecting number A, you you have to open five valves, and also you are testing against your master, where you should test against your servant, which is the swab. The swab is designed for that. It is very easy and simple to change the swab valve, but it is not to change the master. So actually, A is the good answer. Let's go for this second question. Here we have rig up. This is our Christmas tree. We rigged up our BOB already on the Christmas tree. And now the crane is lifting the injector, which contains the stripper, and we are moving it towards the BOB to rig up. But we didn't rig up the injector yet on top of the BOB. And the question say, before rigging up the injector, on the BOB shown in the above figure, which of the following can be tested? Which we can, and you have four selection. Number A, the pipe ram and blind ram. Number B, the blind ram and reel. Number C, we can test a reel and stripper. Number D, we can test the stripper and the blind. Which one of these we can test with this condition that the injector is not rigged up yet on the BOB? Again, I will leave you for a minute before we answer it together. I need you to select one of these groups. Shall we answer it together? Before <clears throat> I look to the selection below, in this situation where the injector is not yet connected to the BUB, I cannot test the, the pipe ram because to test the pipe ram, this has to be ripped up and I run the pipe through the BUB so I can close the pipe ram on the pipe itself, since the pipe is above now, I cannot test the pipe ramp. So any selection here containing pipe ramp, I will take it out. And also, with this situation in front of me, I cannot test the stripper. Because to test the stripper, the rig up has to be completed. But the stripper is in the air now. I cannot test. So any selection here containing stripper or pipe, I will take it away. I will take it out of my selections. So number A, it has the pipe ramp. This is out. Number C has the stripper. This is out. Number D has a stripper. This is out. This will leave me only with one selection, which is B, blind ramp. And read. The blind ramp, I can test it, of course I can, because the BOB is dragged up on the Christmas tree. So, what I will do with this pump, I will apply pressure. This pressure will go in this line to the kill port, which is here. Going down, this is closed, and then going up again is a closed blind because the blind is above the killing port of the BOB. So I'm testing the blind ramp from the direction flow. How can I test the reel? Because this is now what I can do. This is the pipe. So what we do is normally, if this is our pipe, we put here a plug where we can test the pipe before we start to up. Last one. This is a complete rig up of a call tubing unit. It is completely rigged up on the Christmas tree, and we have the shear seal. And the question is all these valves are closed now, and he is asking me in the diagram above which valves need to be opened to pressure test the closed pipe ram in the direction of flow 
all valves are closed at the start of the test. So now all these valves from 1 to 10 are closed, and I am rigged up. The pipe is inside the BUB, and I close the pipe ram against the pipe, and I need to test it from a direction of flow to be sure that the pipe ram is holding pressure. And here are the groups we have. Group A to close valve number three and number 10. Close B is this type, this series of valve, close C and close, and then group D. I will leave you one minute to select one of these groups to use to test the pipe ramp, closed pipe ramp from a direction flow. Shall we continue together? Some of you might select group A, opening two valves, number three and number 10. So by opening number three and number 10, I assume that then you apply pressure in the pump. So this pressure will go through number 10, which you open it, going through the reel, inside the pipe, all the way in, Again, it's swap valve, which is closed, and then goes up. Then you are testing it from a direction of flow. That's fine. But then, what's the reason of opening number three in this case? You don't need it, actually. So, this is not a correct answer. Do you need to try B? Three, four, five, six, seven. Three, four, five, six, seven. So we apply pressure here. It goes through these open valves. Mm, you cannot. Oh, okay. It is closed. So yes, you can. Goes through number three, through the kiln valve here. It goes down to the master, then going upward, you test it from the direction of flow. Yes, you test it from the direction of flow. The mistake here, you are testing against your master, where we said you have to test against your servant, which is the swap. Okay, number three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. So you test pressure goes here, goes here, goes to three, and goes to one and two. Again, what is the reason for three, actually? There's no reason for three. If you go to D, which is the correct answer, one, two, four, five, eight, nine, and ten. So you open number ten, and you open one, two, Four, five, eight, nine. By doing this, you are testing, so your pressure will go through number 10, all the way here. It goes here, it goes down. Again, it's a swap valve, and then pressure goes up. You are testing about, you are testing the pipe ram again, again from the direction of flow. Then, What's the reason, Ahmed, for opening one, two, four, five, eight, nine? Because actually, when you do this pressure test, you bring a chair and sit just after valve number nine, and you do your hand like that. During the test, if you see water dropping on top of your hand, that means the pipe pan is not holding the pressure. Actually, I'm, I'm just joking. You cannot bring a chair, of course, in the field and do that. But I'm, I'm just joking, huh? But, uh, number, valve number one, two, four, five, eight, nine. 
This is the repair line. This is the bleeding of line. If the tight ram is not holding pressure, then water comes out. Then it goes through this line, one, two, four, five, eight, nine, telling you that your pipe ram is leaking. You can visually see. Of course, by pressure gauge, you will see, but this is also. The reason here to open one, two, four, five, eight, nine is to see returns. If you have return, that means it is leaking. Oh, I'm done with this uh, uh, session six. We are at the end of the call tubing sessions. But I have two questions that I need to monitor your answers and I will ask them to see. This is our first question that I need you to answer. The questions say, a low high pressure test is normally performed on a component that is to be exposed to a well pressure. I need you to know why we apply this pressure. This pressure we apply it based on what, what reason, what categories, what standards. I see that you went directly. No, well, I'll wait till you finish. <laughs> Only 10%, 12%, 15% of you vote. I'm waiting to the end. Almost uh, two minutes passed and only 40% of you guys answered the question. Is it that difficult? I will give you one more minute. Less than half of you guys answered the question so far. Okay, uh, to share the letter to you guys that uh, Actually, a good number of you select A, which say, if no leaks are visible, the test is okay. Ah, oh, can I take this answer and put it on junk? How come? I tell you something. You make pressure test to 5,000 PSI to the system, and you do it for 15 minutes. And in 50 minutes, you will see that the pressure goes to 4,000 psi while there is no visible leak. Do you accept this test? Definitely not. Because it could be an internal leak. You have to see why, how. But you cannot, you cannot accept this drop in the pressure gauge when you do a test without knowing exactly why this drop happens and where it happens. 
a 10%, one of the answers, a 10% drop inside the accepted criteria. Who said that? Which standard said that? Do you have the standards? Tell me the standards. 25% or 5%. This is according this 5 or 10 or 25. This has to be according to a standard you are using. Regardless, this standard is your, your local standard, your API standard, your North standards, your company standards or your self-standards. So it's according to standards, which is B, an acceptable criteria should be found in the relevant documentation, like an API or NORSO. This is how the answer should be. You do this based on the standards. Okay, let's go for the second question. Can we go for the second question, Dr. Ahmed? This is the second question. Which of the following items of pressure control equipment must be changed if the coal tubing size is changed? I need to select three answers. Again, I need you to select three answers. There are three items here I have to change if I am changing the pipe size. Three answers I need. So, uh, Engineer Ahmed, for this question, we made it allow only one answer, and the first one was allowing three answers. So it seems like I switched. This, this one, this uh, this one, I need three answers. Okay, but the coding, they will not allow students to select more than <laughs> one. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. So I, I I switched the two questions. You told me one three answers and one. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, answer. no problem. I, I will explain this question to them. In, uh, in, in this question in front of you now, guys, where I need to select three answers, you have to select to, uh, uh, to change, if I'm changing the pipe size, what item of these I have to change, definitely I have to change the stripper guides. Because the stripper, we agree that this stripper is designed to hold on a certain pipe size. If I'm changing the size, I have to change this stripper guides. People who select blind ram, a blind ram has nothing to do with the size because it is blind, it has no profile because this one, it seals on itself. So I don't have to change it if I'm changing the pipe size. Slip ram, of course I have to change the slip ram because this is slip ram, this profile is designed to, to hold or to grip on a certain size. If I'm changing the size, I have to change this lip ramp. A tubing ramp, of course I have, which is the pipe ramp. Because this pipe ramp, this profile is to seal on a certain size. If I'm changing the size, I have to change this. But the shear seal ramp, I don't. Because a shear, we agree it is normally, it, it, it cuts a range of sizes. A shear and seal, when it's seal, a seal has nothing to do with size because it's sealed on itself. In annual BUB, actually annual BUB, it seals on different size, even it seals on itself. Also, an equalizing valve, the equalizing valve has nothing to do with the pipe size. So our three answers is stripper guide, then slip ramp, then tubing ramp. These are the three items I have to change if I change the pipe size. 
I am, uh, I'm rich at the end. Uh, I know that uh, we have been talking for almost one hour, 45 minutes, but I told you from yesterday, it will be a long session. Uh, this is the end, and then I'll see you in a couple of days to attend, you guys to attend the last session, which will be on wireline. Uh, Fatima, I am done. If you have any questions. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Engineer Ahmed, for this amazing and great explanation. And uh, now we will move to questions. So much, many questions, but we will choose two. Um, okay, first one Ooh, about slip rams. Why the slip rams can hold the weight of the pipe? Uh, is it the teeth in the profile? And if pipe ram cannot hold the weight, why do we have pipe and slip rams uh, slip as if uh, slip rams are enough as it seal around the uh, around and hold the weight of the pipe i never mentioned in my discussion that the slip ram seals the slip is to hold the weight only shear is to cut not to see. The shear does not see. The slip does not see. What seals is the pipe wrap or the tubing wrap. That's why we have to have it in our blowout preventer to see. This slip wrap does not see. It holds the weight only. Okay, thank you, Engineer Ahmed. And the next question is, why was the redress period of the first type of the strippers described as a nightmare by the honored speaker? And uh, what is the problem with redressing it? In, in the conventional stripper, which is the very old type, I said it's a nightmare to change the element during the operations. Why? Because if it's a life well, and we stop the operation, we apply our second barrier POB, we bleed off, we introduce this, and then we are allowed now to change the element in the primary barrier. And I said, we take these two pins out, and then we unscrew the top, and then split it, it's open. Then we have to apply pressure from below, pushing the whole system above to be able to change the element. In the conventional stripper, when you apply pressure, the system goes up, but uh, it does not allow you actually where the pipe is in place, where the pipe is in place, it, the system actually does not allow you to be able to catch this element and take it out to change it. So to take this out of the stripper rubber, this was the nightmare that takes almost 45 minutes to over. Because actually we have to, to have a, a device that we, we hammer it on the, on, on the upper part of the stripper to be able to push it out of the well and change it. This was, this was taking a lot of time. That's why we don't use the conventional type. We use the slide door where the, the slide door stripper, it is five minutes because once you open the door, the element is in front of you. You can grab it with your hand easily, take it out. Okay, thank you, Engineer Ahmed. And the last question, packer fluids and packing fluids. What is the difference between the two statements? This, this is not in, in cold tubing, but this is, we discussed it in, uh, when we talk about uh, killing fluid, this was in our first session, but that's a good question. Packing fluid, packer fluid, completion fluid, they are all the same. Why we call it packing fluid? This packing fluid, packer fluid, completion fluid, this is the fluid we fill the annulus with above the packer between the annulus between the tubing and the casing. We call it packing fluid because we pack the annulus with. We call it packer fluid sometimes. Why? because we put it on top of the parker. That's why we call it sometimes parker fluid. It's a completion fluid because we fill this completion. 
So completion flow, packing flow, Parker flow, we are all related to the same body, the same thing, the same issue. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Engineer Ahmed. Uh, so, guys, if you fail to catch up with our Zoom meeting, you can watch it uh, later on uh, our YouTube channel, Petro. And uh, please, if you didn't join our, our Google Classroom, hurry up and join. Uh, join. Um, you will only be notified of the quizzes and final exam once you join the Google Classroom. The link to the classroom is available on our Facebook uh, page, Arab Oil and Gas Academy. And again, thank you so much, Engineer Ahmed. It was an amazing session and I'm sure everyone has learned a lot from this highly informative and interesting webinar. We are very glad that uh, we have you for many webinars in this course. Uh, hope you guys en enjoyed this session and uh, please all stay safe and see you soon again. Thank you, Fatma, and thank you, everyone.